to what is evolution. Um, evolution is actually something surprisingly simple, but we have to ask the following question more precisely. What is it that evolves? Uh, and the answer, what is it that evolves is the population. The carrier of the evolutionary process is a population, not a species. Um, we talk about evolution of the brain, we talk about evolution of the genes, but the only thing that really evolves is a population. Populations evolve, populations of reproducing individuals. This could be cells, animals, plants, they could be ideas if we talk about non-genetic evolution. And then you have, oops, then you have mutation. And mutation means that, um, there's a new type emerging. And then you have selection. Selection means that different types over time grow at different rates. Uh, and uh, that, for example, this red cell here could be fitter than these blue cells and therefore it increases in abundance. And this is the idea of selection. So for a long time, mutation and selection were considered to be the only forces of the evolutionary process. And sort of over the last 20 years, more and more, I have proposed that there's a third fundamental force of evolution. And this third fundamental force is actually cooperation. And cooperation somehow means that there are units that are working together, they help one another. And as they help one another more and more, they form a new level of organization. And so this could be the emergence of multicellularity or the emergence of the eukaryotic cell with cell organelles or the emergence of human society. And so I have argued that cooperation, uh, so what, what is cooperation? Cooperation is an interaction where there's a donor and there's a recipient and the donor pays a cost and the recipient gets a benefit. So this cost and benefit are in terms of fitness. I give up some of my reproduction, I reduce my fitness, I increase your fitness. I help the other person to be more successful, the other cell to reproduce faster. And uh, natural selection opposes cooperation. So if we have a population of cooperators and defectors, natural selection without anything else always favors the defectors until everybody is a defector in the end and cooperation is destroyed. And therefore natural selection needs help to favor cooperators over defectors. And this help is given in five mechanisms for the evolution of cooperation. And these mechanisms are interaction structures of um, organisms, individual cells or people. And these five mechanisms, um, so there are thousands of papers on evolution of cooperation. And I have proposed that they can be subdivided into those five categories, direct reciprocity, indirect reciprocity, spatial selection, group selection, and kin selection. And I described them in my book, um, Super Cooperators. But here are three examples of cooperation. And this is a kind of cooperation that existed 3.5 billion years ago on Earth. These are cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria form filaments, strings, Every so often a cell dies in order to feed the others with nitrogen. So this cell here does not reproduce, it helps the others to reproduce. 3.5 billion years ago. 125 million years ago, the origin of the ants, these are workers and these are the larvae of the queen. The workers do not reproduce, they help another individual to reproduce. So Darwin was fascinated why does natural selection design a worker ant to be so perfectly equipped for what it does when it has no offspring? It has no offspring. Nevertheless, natural selection has designed it to be perfect in its function. And the answer is the evolution of eusociality here. And for ants, this happened 125 million years ago. And here, an example from our own time. So this is a painting of Vincent van Gogh of the Good Samaritan. Uh, and so this is the idea, of course, that humans help one another. We have an instinct to help one another. And what I propose is that cooperation and not competition is actually the master architect of evolution. And in all of those steps, in the step from prebiotic chemistry to RNA world, to proteins, to genomes, to cells, to bacteria, eukarya, complex multicellularity, insect societies, people, in all of those steps, uh, animal society, people, um, it is cooperation 
uh, that has played a crucial role in each of those steps. So I think more than just competition and fight, it is helping one another that is the fundamental idea of evolution. And then uh, I also observed that in certain mechanisms such as direct and indirect reciprocity, the winning strategies of cooperation are generous, hopeful, and forgiving. Um, and I think that is an interesting observation because if evolution is just based on fight, if evolution is just based on conflict, then uh, why would God want people to be different, so different? Why would God want people to help and love one another? And I say, I think we see uh, the traces of this already in sort of those uh, uh, aspects of natural selection that favor cooperation in that uh, the winning strategies are generous, hopeful and forgiving. You want to help others. You hope you can collaborate with strangers and you can forgive the mistakes of others. And uh, in the last few years, I have been working very much on a game theory of love, asking uh, the question whether game theory can motivate uh, love. 